Hi, my name's Turbo Strunk. I'm from Troop 7737, and today I'll be performing Nigel's monologue from the first annual Academy Awards by Alan Hanel, and pa Paige's monologue from The Death of King Arthur by Matthew Freeman. Before I begin my oral presentation on the play Hamlet, I would just like to take a moment to clear the air about a few things. I understand that some nasty rumors have been going around about me. Rumor one, I have never even read the play Hamlet. The book has been unopened in the bottom of my locker since the first day we got the assignment. Rumor two, I don't know a thing about Hamlet. Up until yesterday, I thought Hamlet was a clever name for a small breakfast item. According to that rumor, I even went to Denny's and tried to order a Hamlet with a side of home fries. <sighs> rumor three, I am completely unprepared for this presentation. And all I plan to do is get a barely passing grade by standing up here and bluffing my way through until my time's up. Rumor four, the most sickening one of all. I, Nigel Thorburn, have no academic motivation whatsoever. I expend the least amount of energy to speak by using only my natural charm and extreme talent in slinging the bull. I want to say right here and right now that I highly resent these rumors. If any of you have been spreading them, I say, pardon my language please, damn you, damn your conniving hearts and your lying mouths. If any of you have begun to doubt me because of these rumors, I say listen, for I'm about to give a presentation that will erase all worry, all fear, all doubt, all... Excuse me, what? My time is up. You mean to say I'll be getting a D minus for simply using up my time, even though I haven't yet begun to reveal the great mystery of the play Hamlet? I will. I am most appalled. But I accept my fate without complaint. Hey, that almost rhymed. I am good. Today, my trusty blade lays a lonesome siege to the stronghold of a beast. Why lonesome? The blade, my wooden rapier, is alone today. But does a valiant hero need more than strength and purity? Ah, oh, no. A man once told me that if I kept my intentions pure and coarse just, I would be rewarded. The only thing I question is the reward. Is honor and goodness not its own reward? By Arthur, I have learned that courage makes a knight, and that might comes after right. I could be with him one day when I am taller and battle beasts and travel to the land of Gore to save the maid Melinda, a pretty girl from the worried blood roots in the black sorcerer. My blade, made sharper with use, you see, so that I know its weight and wield it skillful. The maid Melinda leaps into my arms, and as she loves my goodness and my dedication, is married to me before the king. But not before I faced above a pit of fire. Her captor, outwitting him with charms and riddles, says, stand down, small knight. Your age impedes your might. And with the maiden's hand in mine, I quip, Mother says as much, and told me that as early as this morning, before I felled the sorcerer in roots. But you know as much as mother villain. There is none too young for bravery. <laughs> He'd pause for thinking of a retort. And in his leg, then arm, then other arm, then heart, I'd stick him with my blade, a married, holy, truthful hero. Can you see me then? I am not noble, I know. But Arthur was raised by farmers, as was I. I'll see him, and he'll see me and him likewise. I'll carry what I must, teach them a move or two with my cutter. <sighs> Some may tell him no, like mother. But kings know who is noble. In a few short months, I will travel to the land of Camelot and serve the king. I will be the child of the round table, 